Hello my Dotty family and welcome to my channel. Join me on this magical journey through the world of dot art. I am Zelda from the Fairy Realm and today I want to show you how to draw your guidelines for your mandala designs. What you're going to need to do this is your background or black chalkboard paint. If you haven't watched my video on paint yet, I suggest you do so now. You're going to need your surface that you're going to be painting on. Um, I've got a canvas here. You're going to need your stencils, your drawing compass, ruler, your touch-up brush, your white charcoal or chalk pencil, and a little bowl of water. So I've already gone ahead and painted my canvas. What you want to do is you want to paint the front and the sides of the canvas because when you hang it up, it just has a nice finish. What you also want to do is to make sure that your paint is not too thick because if you'd leave paint streaks, then it's going to interfere with our dots later. If you want to speed up the drying process, you can do what I've done. <laughs> quickly paint it and then just grab your hairdryer and just quickly dry it because um, I'm usually very eager to start and I can't wait for the paint to dry. All right, I'm going to explain about these stencils a little bit later, so don't worry about that just yet. Okay, we need to find the center of our working surface. So for my canvas, it will be at 12 and a half. So I'm just going to mark it on each and every side like that. And then with those marks, I'm just going to find the center. So more or less see where that's going to be and then just make a little cross. Right, like that. And then just to double check that I really do have the center is I'm going to see that my cross runs exactly halfway. That's 12 and a half, that looks good. Okay. Now that we've found our center of the canvas, you're going to use your drawing compass. Don't freak out about this <laughs> because we are going to paint over this a little bit later. If you'd prefer not to make a hole, you can actually put a little plaster or something on there, but I just make a little hole right there. Okay. And in order for me to see the hole properly, I just color around it so that I'll be able to find the center. For those of you who don't have my stencil, I have made these uh, quick get around stencils that you can also download from my Etsy store. I do sell them. They also go in different uh, sections from three all the way up to 20. And how they work is you can cut them out and just you're going to make a hole in the center like that. Okay. And that's how you can actually also line it up with your hole like that. So this specific one is we are working with a 14 section design. Okay. So if you line it up like that, just see like that. You can now just make a dot on every single straight line and that will give you 14 equal sections. When you take it off, then you just can connect it. But I'm going to use my normal stencil. So if you do have my stencils, you're going to work with the 14 lane right there. Okay. Now, uh, with a big stencil like this, how you would find the center is you can put it down and then you'll see that, try and get it that it's equally far away from all of the sides. So like that. And then you'll see that my center is lined up automatically. There you can see it. Okay. Now that my center is all lined up, I'm going to mark all of my 14. So I want 14 equal sections. So you don't want to press too hard with your chalk pencil. You also want to make sure it's quite sharp. You just want to mark to see because if you're going to press really hard, it's going to leave indents 
in your canvas if you are working with a canvas. And we don't want to bend or stretch the fabric, so you have to work quite softly with this. Also, if you're pressing too hard, then you're going to break the tip of your pencil. Here we go. Oh, I skipped lens. Hold on. <laughs> That's where you can quickly see. If it doesn't run in a circle, then you can quickly see that you have kind of skipped lanes. So it's there, and then that's the last one there. There we go. Okay, that looks better. Now, just to make sure that you've got all of them, just count them. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. So that gives you 14 equal dots. If they don't look like this, then you've done something wrong. Then you just need to double check what you've done. From here, what I do is you have to lodge your pencil in that hole every single time. And you're going to use your ruler just to connect those lines. As you can see, I'm drawing a really, really light line. If your line is too thick, it's going to interfere with the paint a little bit later. So you don't want a thick line. You just want a thin line to see exactly where your planning lines are going. Some people get lazy. Oops. My kitty cat Topa is... Come, come. <laughs> all right uh, some people get lazy and they want to cross connect and when they cross connect sometimes it doesn't run exactly through the center it might run just a little bit off i would not recommend doing that because then you're going to struggle to get your dots um, especially the center dots to be um, nicely lined up so you're going to draw the line all the way to the edge of the canvas like that. At this point you're going to check that your sections are more or less all exactly equally the same size. If they are not, just correct it and see that your line does run so that all of your sections look more or less equal. Now she's drinking my water. Hey, 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 hey. <laughs> oh, that's topaz for you. After that, what you're going to do is you're going to take one of the lines that run to the center of the edge of your canvas. I'm just going to put it like this. If you're working in inches, you can probably put it about a half an inch or a little bit less. It just depends. It doesn't really matter how many how many of these lines you do because that's where our circles are going to run because i will explain to you later but that's basically got to do with how your design expands so what i'm doing now is i'm putting my zero on my hole and then i'm marking every 1.5 centimeter increments like that to me this is quite a nice size to work with And then I'm making an extra one here at one. Right, next up, I'm going to take your drawing compass. I've got a small little pencil here that just works for me. Line it up nicely like that. I'm just securing it. Now, the best way to do this is to line up your drawing compass like that and then draw your circle a lot of people leave it in here and then they start stretching and I actually had a lady who ripped almost like a centimeter hole into her canvas because she was stretching it so much so just to be on the safe side take it out line it up and then draw your circle so for those of you who haven't worked with these since high school this is the tip where you hold it and it just basically glides. You just make it swing around to give you your circles. Yeah. I can hold it and stretch it because I don't do it hard. <laughs> so yes, if you, if you know exactly what you're doing, you can cheat a little bit like me. <laughs> there we go.
then just to make sure that the chalk doesn't interfere with our paint you're going to dip your brush into the water and then just wipe off the excess water because else you're going to sit with pools on your canvas which we don't want then I'm going to wipe out the center circle like that I'm also going to wipe out my stencil dots And if my 1.5 centimeter marks are quite thick, I'm going to take those out too. Right. And that's how far it goes for the prepping of our canvases. Right, while that is drying, I quickly want to explain something to you. So these are the structure lines that we're working with. The structure lines that we just drew, which means that your dots are going to fall on the lines, okay? Unless I say something goes in between the lines, then you're probably going to just see that it falls in between. But mostly it's going to go on the lines. And also when you are dotting, and you maybe made one that's a little bit skew. Don't try and correct the dots that follow because that's really going to throw your designs off. So the straight lines are there to make sure that your petals stay in structure. Okay, so never, never, never go off of the straight lines. Also, every time you do a dot, make sure that the line runs in the center of your dot. So it doesn't matter how small your dot is or how big it is. Try and get it as center to the straight line as you possibly can. Now, when it comes to the circles, the circles are there to make sure that your design expands equally. So in other words, that we don't sit with a lopsided design so that it expands quicker on this side than it does on this side. So that's what the circles are there for. A lot of people get thrown off by the circles because they now want to go and dot specifically on the circles. And it's, it shouldn't be like that. Just like I said in the other videos, you try and keep your dots as compact as you possibly can all of the time. So say, for instance, by chance, okay, my circle, my dot fell there. So in other words, it is touching the circle line which means that all of the dots in that sequence now need to touch that circle line. And that's how you make sure that your design is expanding equally. Say for instance, by chance, my next dot falls exactly in the center of the two circles. Then all of them need to fall like that. That's how you make sure that your design is expanding equally. All right, so the straight lines are there for the structure to make sure that it all are equally far away from each other. And then this, the circles are there to make sure that your design is expanding equally on all sides. So this is something you need to keep your eye on throughout the whole design as you're working on it. So that's just explaining why we have all of these structure lines and exactly how they work. And that concludes this tutorial of doing the design lines and circles. If you want to get these stencils, you can find them on my Etsy store. They're homemade, but they're nice to use just as for now. Let me show you how it actually lines up as well. It should line up. Let's see where's the center. If you want about there. There we go. So, like I said in the beginning, so if you mark all of where the straight lines are ending, you're also going to end up with 14 equal sections, just like we did with the other stencil. Let's continue this discussion in the comment section below. If you have any questions or comments you'd like to leave, you're more than welcome. Thank you for joining me on this magical journey. I'm looking forward to seeing you on the next one. Stay dotty, stay magical. Goodbye.